The theme this month is water. Our speaker this morning is Nor Nolan Villar. Nolan is the founder and managing director of Track Kayaks. Nolan's passion for track has spanned nearly 15 years. He has pursued the company's success relentlessly, including being a core part of the group that refined a hand-built prototype into a shape-shifting kayak that can now be found across the globe. Nolan has navigated challenges along the way with the support of his, of his amazing family and team. Coming from a more conventional career as a chartered accountant, his commitment to track stems from a strong feeling of gratitude for being behind a product that gives the track global community a series of adventures that were not possible for them before. So please help me welcome Nolan Villard. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. So welcome to Blue Friday. Uh, this is a, a talk on the, from the eyes of a kayak, as we, as we say. Uh, my name is uh, Nolan Villard, as Steve uh, mentioned, and I'm the uh, managing director and founder of uh, Track Kayaks uh, here in Airdrie, Alberta, a sea kayak, international sea kayaking company based in Airdrie. Yes, you, you heard that correctly. Um, I'm really, really honored uh, to be here uh, in, in a room of, you know, self-declared and, and acknowledged creatives. I think that's such a wonderful thing in this day and age. We need to be, uh, I loved hearing the mantra uh, early on about uh, we're all creative. That's definitely true. Um, I'm grateful and privileged to be here in the room uh, with you here today. And I should tell you that uh, why that is, um, I'm, I'm super grateful to be standing here uh, giving this talk, for, first because it's the first time I've actually spoken about the track story outside of kind of our tribe of paddlers and partners and uh, people that we work with you know, globally. So it's the first time I've, I've given this, this kind of talk, so that's an exciting, exciting moment. It's a little bit scary standing in front of all of you folks and, and telling the story, but it's, uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here. And the story is really about the power, um, the power and the role uh, of water uh, that's, that's been part of the vision that I've had for track um, over all these years. Um, because this is the first time I'm doing it, there's going to be a kind of a fluidity, if you, if you will, uh, with the theme of water, a fluidity about the talk. Um, I may f just follow some intuition, which is, again, something I think we all need to do. Um, and I'm going to try to flow with, with the talk, but uh, really excited to be here. And I believe that I'm here for a reason. Um, I'm actually about to leave for my, our factory tonight uh, in the Philippines. Um, so the fact that I said yes uh, to this talk, uh, as, as Nicholas uh, Jones, who I've worked with in the past and has worked with me and helped me build track uh, early on, uh, has said is that um, there, you know, if you looked at just, just logic, I would have said, no, I know I can't make it work. And, you know, I've got an amazing wife, let's just say that. And, and I just felt a call to say yes and, and come here and present. Uh, and I think you're here for a reason as well. So um, I think we're in for, for an interesting, interesting talk this morning. Welcome to Blue Friday. Uh, from the eyes of a kayak. This kayak, uh, this kayaker actually was last month uh, paddling down in Patagonia in a very remote region of Patagonia, and this is what that paddler got to see from the eyes of, of the kayak. Uh, but what can you see through the eyes of a kayak, uh, or feel through the eyes of a kayak? Um, my, my intention here today is to kind of share my journey you know, in building track and, and fulfilling the vision that I have for the company. Um, the theme, just so you know, the theme of, of uh, and the building block for me in, in everything I've done up to this point has been really about water. Uh, and our kind of profound connection uh, to water. Uh, my job today in this Blue Friday, it looks a little more white outside than blue. There's more of a white to, uh, tinge to it than, than blue. Uh, but I'm welcoming everyone to kind of, inviting everyone to look at this as Blue Friday. It's like, let's, let's really explore water. Uh, and my job is to help, help everyone here see water uh, through a bit of a different lens uh, and see water in a whole new light. So a little bit about me, a little bit about my background. Um, I grew up 
in the prairies, and I'm behind this international sea kayak company now. Um, I grew up in grocery stores. This picture was taken with my dad uh, in July of 75 uh, in Moose Jaw. Um, so I grew up, we lived on top of the grocery store in small town Saskatchewan. Um, I lived on baseball fields and hockey rinks, very typical kind of prairie upbringing. And then carried through my life, I, uh, I had a lot of influence from my parents. They, they owned these grocery stores, so understanding how to deal with people, um, you know, in customer service and uh, really being a stand for people in, in their community, they, they definitely showed me a lot of that uh, value uh, early on. And, and then I carried through my life pretty typically. I went through school, I became a chartered accountant and uh, you know, went to business school in Saskatoon and became a chartered accountant, started working with Deloitte here in Calgary in, in 1995. But I always had this kind of entrepreneurial blood running through me. I, I felt it from pretty early on, and so I was always looking for opportunities to do something different. And uh, so one of the things I want to share here is, you know, how does this you know, prairie bean counter uh, end up running this, this uh, uh, sea kayaking company here in Airdrie. And a little bit of the background is I, I met, I was living down in the Bay Area in, uh, in San Francisco working uh, as a controller, as, as a, an accountant uh, down there. And, um, you know, the Bay Area is a beautiful place, lots of things to do. Uh, at the end of my two and a half years there, the most memorable part of my time in San Francisco was kayaking. I went out with a friend of mine two times in two and a half years and it was actually this shift of vantage point from seeing the the city from the water. Everyone else was on the shore looking out at the water, you know, all the tourists, all the people that, you know, this is how people appreciate a city. I was actually out on the water looking back at the city and that was just, there was something about that experience that was just really profound for me. And then I moved back to Saskatchewan in uh, 2003, and I decided to start working with, with uh, inventors and helping people get products to market, all that kind of thing. And I meet these two guys that had this hand-built prototype of a kayak that goes in a golf bag. <laughs> and, uh, and so I just something about that really uh, struck a chord with me and I started working with them and one thing led to another and then I ended up running the company. So <laughs> it's, it's been an interesting journey and there's a whole lot more to be told there but th that's for another day. So what is this, this kayak all about? This kayak, um, that's a 16 foot portable sea kayak, packs down in 10 minutes into that travel golf bag. So you can check it on a plane, you can uh, put it in an apartment, in and out of small fuel-efficient vehicles, get it around anywhere. Nicholas, we were talking earlier about some of the places you can get this kayak to that no one else can. You can put them in float planes, you can, you can adventure into some pretty unique areas. Um, and the, the unique part about it is we call it the ultimate touring kayak because touring kayaks are, you know, river, lake, ocean, kayaks, longer boats that are more for that sort of, um, you know, not as much the adrenaline experience of a white water, more of the, the pristine experience on the water, on a lake or on the ocean. And uh, touring kayaks are typically hard shell. So uh, to get a really good boat that you can trust in certain types of environments, you usually are relying on a hard shell. We wanted to flip, flip that and uh, wanted to really focus on uh, building a kayak that was portable but was also uh, high performance and that you could trust and, and that you were happy with and, and could paddle in all these different environments. So about three years ago we started down the path of, um, of reinventing the boat. Uh, we started the company back in 2006 uh, and in uh, about three years ago we started this, this path of rebuilding the kayak and we, we dropped the weight by uh, about 10 pounds by going to uh, carbon fiber technology, um, 7,000 series aluminum, all kinds of uh, really cool materials that help, helped uh, bring the weight down, brought the pack down into a smaller size so it was more easy to get around, right? And, uh, and then we introduced this thing through a crowdfunding initiative through Kickstarter and Indiegogo. 
and it really took off. And now we're, I'm going back to the factory tonight because we've got shipments all over the world that are happening here uh, in the first half of 2019. So it's quite an exciting time for the company. But this is an original, you know, it's a skin on frame kayak, right? Um, it's a, a membrane skin over a carbon fiber and, and aluminum frame. And so it really is consistent with the origin of the kayak, which is, you know, there's a 4,000 plus year history uh, of kayaks that are skin on frame. So up in the eastern and western Arctic, uh, there's, there's, there's evidence of, of these types of hunting kayaks back, you know, three, four thousand years, maybe even more. And if you can imagine the bravery that it would take to be out paddling on the frigid Arctic waters with a, with a skin, a seal skin, it was seal skin over whalebone, where they had, where they had uh, wood, they would use wood, but in a lot of parts of the Eastern Arctic, they would use whalebone uh, and, and over seal skin. And they were hunting for their families, you know? They were bringing back what they needed to survive. And so the, the bravery of that is something that's always been inspiring for us uh, and helps us honor that origin um, in our modern materials, this kayak that has uh, modern materials of the original skin on frame design. There's a little clip, I'm, I'm not gonna play the clip this morning, but there's a, a, a film, a National Film Board film from 1922 called Nanook of the North. It's a great little video uh, and film. Uh, but it's a super interesting, it's almost 100 years now since this was filmed, and uh, I'd invite anyone to take a, a look at the, and we can, we can share it later, um, but I'm not going not to share it now. But we're coming up on 100 years since that film was made. We're, we're at track, we're looking at building partners to uh, do a film to kind of honor that 100-year-old that film uh, coming up within a couple of years. Let's take a, a little different path here. Um, I want to talk about defying conventions and, in, and, and honoring some of the ancient wisdom that we've got to build upon here in, in our society these days. One of the things that I would tell, and, and I think all of us are experiencing with what, we're, uh, what we see in media and just in general in our society now, is that a lot of the conventional thinking uh, and these paradigms are just not working uh, anymore. And we got to start to rethink um, what we know uh, and start to leverage some of this ancient wisdom that's out there um, and also rely more on our intuition and really connect with what some of this internal knowing that, that we all have and we've maybe forgot that we have. Um, and I think there's, there's definitely some, uh, a lot more people are, are starting to understand that and, and connect them, their, their own uh, self to that aspect to say there is more here. Um, I don't have to rely on all this information out there. I can be a little more self-reflective. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that, that the powers that be don't really want people to know. Um, they, they like the conventional ways. They, you know, it's a, it's a machine out there. And so I think we need to, to push back on that. We're at a time where we need to push back on that and it's about rethinking paradigms. One of the things we did is we rethought this paradigm and we said, hey, a portable kayak can't paddle like a hard shell. And we said, okay, well, take a look at this. You shouldn't be able to bust through surf with a, a portable kayak that goes in a bag. Uh, this was our way of doing it with our product. But beyond the product, there's other things out there. And, and this is part of what I want to do with my talk today is focus on one primary paradigm uh, out there. And that's our, our health and wellness and medical uh, paradigm. Um, you know, we've essentially been programmed to kind of take drugs to, to resolve issues of health and it's very reactive and all this and there's a movement afoot um, to take responsibility for our health, take back responsibility for our health and our wellness and look at things a little differently. And so I'm never one to, my own experience has been, I'm never one to say it's got to be all one way or all the other way. I believe in an integrated, uh, functional approach to our health and wellness. And so I'm, I'm curious, uh, for, of everyone in here, how many people uh, would say that they've explored uh, other modalities of healing or, or wellness practices? It's, it's something, like I said, it's a movement afoot that, uh, that's been happening. And... Um, and it's, it's really about looking at what other uh, access we have to things that can help us build our own health and healing and be more 
proactive about it, but also use some of these ancient, um, you know, ancient practices. And you know, there's things that are back to Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine and um, some of the North American healing methods from some of the uh, tribal backgrounds. There's a lot of verbal traditions that have uh, been passed on. And I think more people are starting to find ways to access those modalities and bring it into kind of your overall health. And I think it's a super important thing to focus on. But how does this connect to water? So we, we started the talk talking about water. Um, now I'm talking about health and wellness. Um, how does that connect to water? Water is life. Uh, really. Water is everywhere. It's, it's life. It's life-giving. Um, it's an element that is one of the four elements that some of you may have explored through other uh, means in the past. Uh, but it's the most common substance on Earth, right? Water is the most common substance on Earth, but scientists really don't understand the, some of its unique characteristics that makes it life-giving. And so it's something to really explore because Essentially, our, our Earth is made up of 70% water, right? So water is, the life, is really the lifeblood of our planet. So how does that connect to our personal health? One of the things about water is that it will go, it basically goes to where it's needed. You know, it, it, there's actually an interesting, that scientists can't really explain the, I, the concept of transpiration as water moves up through a plant, for example, to where it's needed. And I think there's something to learn from that. Um, to say, okay, well, what, what's this thing? What, what makes water so special? And, and really, what, in, in defying gravity, it's really uh, defying the convention of science. You know, uh, on any other planet, there isn't water. Water, you know, at NASA, when they're looking for life on other planets, they're looking for evidence of water because from what we know about water, or we know about life, life requires water uh, in the way we see it. So, um, it's such a critical element for life, but how does that translate to our own health? One thing I want to uh, challenge people with here is water, people think of water like, you know, we have to manage water, there's resource management, we should drink such and such amount of water a day. Um, it's like it's this thing over here, we need to manage water. Um, I'm inviting people to say, you know what, we're not separate from it, we actually are water. When you look at the makeup of the human body, I've always found this super fascinating, that our body is made up of somewhere between 60 and 75% water. And if, if that's the case, if our body's made up of water, what's our relationship to water? We are water. We, are, you know, we, we need to understand how that impacts our, our well-being, right? Is the water in our bodies. And one of the things that I've noticed about human beings is that when you walk into someone's house, we have this natural connection to water, is I guess the point, is we have this natural connection to water, whether it's uh, conscious or subconscious, people are connected to water. If you walk into someone's house, you'll see their artwork, you look around on their walls, and most things, if it's not pictures of family, it's stuff with water in it, like probably 60, 70% of art has water as part of it. People like to live near water. Right? They like to go to the walk on the beach. They like to go uh, walk along the river. We have this innate connection to water. Um, and I believe it's because we're made up of the stuff. There's a, a researcher and scientist in Japan named Masaru Emoto who studied water. His whole life, basically everything about his life was, was about his um, study of water and its impact on human health. And he looked at it and said, Water molecules actually have, if you, if you can get this, there's four, they've found, they figured out, and this is what we know, is that there's about 440,000 information panels uh, in the structure of water, which means that water is capable of recording and storing information. And what Emoto looked at is he said, you know, what's the impact of positive and negative emotions uh, on, on water? If we're made up of 60, 70% of the stuff, if we're around positive energy, if we're around, you know, uh, intense environments or stressful things, his, he, he, he was saying he thinks that that's going to have an effect on the structure of the water in your body. And he actually tested it. So what he did is used emotions, words, kind of sentiments and energy to represent different, different um, types of feelings. So 
you know, saying thank you or saying you make me sick. Um, you know, you can see some of the examples there. Um, what he did is he would then, he would, they, would, they would give this energy towards the water and then take, they basically would uh, uh, cryogenically freeze the water very quickly and look at it in depth in a microscope uh, at a very, very microscopic level and see what the structure was doing. And it's absolutely fascinating. There's a book here for anyone that's interested. Uh, but he did a book called Messages from Water. The one I have is Love Thyself, um, one, of his, one of his books. But it talks about this effect of energy and of, of emotions on water molecules. So just imagine if, if that's the case, if, that, if water is being impacted by emotions and things at that level, what happens when you're around, like you're in constantly stressful environments or you're you know, you're, you're, or the other end of it, you're, you're finding really peaceful environments to be part of. And, and of course, in life, we have to deal with all of that, right? <laughs> um, but it's trying to find more access to those kinds of experiences that help um, the health of the water in our bodies. I always found this very, very interesting. There's a, a, a neuroscientist, well, it, actually, the fellow is a, a marine biologist, this uh, Wallace J. Nichols. And uh, he's out of, uh, he's off the coast of California, and he's put together a, a body of work that he calls the Blue Mind. And it's, it's this concept that, this surprising science that shows how being near, in, on, or underwater uh, can make you happier, healthier, more connected, and better at what you do. And so he's worked with neuroscientists on this, and he's looking at this, and so it's not just a... Uh, uh, you know, the scientist in, in Japan that's kind of had this theory and done this work. This body of work is now being looked at at a much deeper level with neuroscientists connecting to quantum science. It's like becoming, you know, there's definitely evidence that suggests that how we interact with water has a profound impact on our health uh, and our happiness. So from, met, from you know, um, uh, our uh, uh, emotional health, through to our physical health. It's all kind of connected through this relationship with water. I'm not gonna go through it too in depth here, but this is my friend Courtney. Um, Nicholas was good friends with Courtney as well. Um, a renowned nature photographer, he and his wife, uh, Cheryl, that you can see in the picture. Uh, they're from Saskatchewan, good prairie roots as well. Um, traveled the planet uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, did this book called The Sacred Earth. You know, they horse traded their way around the planet um, and, and got this, you know, finished with this Sacred Earth concert that they would deliver. They did it, they delivered it at the, um, uh, they delivered the concert at the uh, Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro in 90, 1991. They were invited there in this beautiful concert to music showing all these sacred places. And in the fall of 99, Courtney um, started to look at uh, there was 100 days left until the year 2000. And he decided he's going to get this vignette of work. Any of you photographers out there can probably imagine what was going through his mind. He's like, there's 100 days left until the year 2000. He said, I'm going to capture a, an amazing body of work. So he started fo photographing every day for the next 100 days. And he came away with um, a relationship with his backyard swimming pool and the water in his pool. Um, he ended up um, working with that pool and with that body of water for about two or three years, I believe. Hey, Nicholas? I think two or three years he uh, worked with that body of water and, and, and took 30,000 images of this. And these are the kinds of images that, came away, came away, that he came away with. It's interesting because... As a nature photographer, he was this world-renowned guy for seeing all these beautiful places all over the planet. And he found that the most profound and interesting and amazing work of his life's work was in his backyard, taking reflections off of water in his pool. And he was aware of a lot of these concepts I've talked about, like uh, Emoto's work. And he claimed that over the course of those three years, the, the imagery got more got more luscious as, as the years went by, as he poured gratitude into that pool and into that body of water. It was a very natural swimming pool. But he, uh, to me, his, his approach and his work is very much part of that building this relationship with water. 
so we're made of water, right? Uh, uh, like I said, so what does that all mean, right? So given some of the things I've shared about building our relationship with water and the impact of, of water on our health, what, what, what does that say about what we need to be aware of and, and bring into our, into our lives? I call this my working assertion <laughs> um, on consciousness and, and uh, energy. And my, my working assertion is that water is a conduit. So our life energy, our chi or our ki, as some of you have um, been familiar with, flows through our body, right? And I believe it's transmitted through the water in our body. And so if that highway of, of water throughout our body isn't healthy and you have blockages, you're going to end up with issues like you know, symptoms start to show up as if that life energy isn't flowing through you to that level, you are going to start to see things happen. Same goes the other way. When you are giving yourself these experiences that allow your water to rebalance in your body and you bring that, you know, the balance and that energy, then the, the, the flow of energy can flow through your body freely. And that's the sign of a, of a vital um, human being. And there's obviously a lot of different aspects to this, but, but that to me is such a key part of, of this. If we're made up of 70% water and our energy is flowing through our body, if, if the water is the highway, the conduit, we need to take care of the, of the water in our body. We need to drink more water, we need to be around water. And I, and I think this is why I believe that a lot of the modalities of healing are very effective. So whether it's Tai Chi or um, meditation or um, you know any kind of, of modality of healing that people are tapping into it's actually helping rebalance that water people don't think of that literally like what they're doing but I believe it's tied into a lot of different modalities of healing so I'll bring it back to the kayak I believe that when we're on the water and and this is the same for if we're having a bath or we're at the uh, you know we're at a spa uh, when we're connecting with water it brings you into this kind of, I call it an energetic chiropractic adjustment. <laughs> so you're in, in the kayak specifically, your, your bum is below the water line. You're, you're in the water, left, right paddle stroke, right? Uh, you get in this rhythm. Um, you start to create this relationship with the water. And I believe that the water in our bodies balances to the water in the waterway. And this is why people come away from these experiences going, wow, I feel so great. You know, and it's because of that profound experience. It's that you're actually rebalancing the energy in your body and you're, you're giving that water that free flow of energy. And that's why people come away from that. That's why people go hiking. Um, you know, it's not the water connection, but it's the nature uh, connection. I believe water has a, has a profound, a, mo a more profound impact on, on that aspect than, than hiking or land-based activities. Is, is my opinion. Of course, I run a kayak company, so I should say that. <laughs> but for me, wellness is vitality. Um, so, you know, this is what we're really in service of as a company is, is people's vitality. Our core purpose as a company, we call it Life Unleashed. Uh, we've, uh, we've done a lot of sort of deep work in terms of learning what, what's really at the core of what we do. And it's building this confidence and competence on and off the water. But the bottom line is we want to give people, give people tons of these kinds of experiences, like give them access to that experience more and more time, get more people out on the water that are getting that, uh, that connection and, and really having that impact on their health. And we call it Life Unleashed, and it's fun because we've got paddlers all over the world now um, you know, from different parts of the world. We have a program we call the Pilot, our Pilot Program, which are people who are are kind of product ambassadors, but they do a whole lot more than that. And we get together for these events like skills camps and uh, training, and it's just a, a beautiful uh, experience that, that we get. And we're building this community globally, and the kind of people that have come around it is, is really quite spectacular. So it's been a real amazing experience for, for me being behind this. This is a, a, a picture of myself and Courtney and uh, another fellow that was heavily involved with track, Gian Bazola. Um, and Gion started with us here in Calgary a number of years ago and became a core part of what we do. 
But connecting back to this ancient knowledge, um, this was actually from a, a vision quest that I did on Courtney's property um, that was a Blackfoot sort of tradition uh, of a vision quest. And I was out in the bush for, for three days with just my, just my water bottle and, uh, and myself, uh, no tent, and just getting communed with, with nature. And this was right at the end of, of the three days coming off and you can see the glow and that to me is the energy that that comes off of those kinds of experiences. But Gion's been a key part of what we do uh, at Track. There's a wonderful video uh, called the Roots, uh, Roots of Track that Gion goes through a lot of this, his experience with Track and what's driven him uh, to it. So um, I'd invite people to take a look at that video. It, it gets into a lot of depth in terms of what is really at the core of what we do. Uh, Gion's a, a well-spoken gentleman and a real close friend. Bringing it back to how we run our company, it's about this vitality model. We've built, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but we've built a model for how we run our company that's based on how vital is the company, how vital is everyone in the company. And uh, we call it our, our life force, <laughs> the track life force. Um, but we've, we've leveraged some of the, the ancient knowledge of chakra, um, the chakra system, um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, built towards like how we build our company. And it's a model that's really served us well um, and is quite a beautiful thing to, to work with uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So why Blue Friday? So I believe that people that are connected to the water will be the water keepers. So we talk, you hear lots of stuff about uh, global warming, um, climate change, is it, is it human caused, is it not? I believe that if you want to find evidence on either side, you're going to. <laughs> um, my belief is, do we want to, do we want to, what do we want to do to our planet? What do we want, you know, it, it, the, the, the symbiosis of our health and the health of, our, of nature and of our waterways are integrally connected. And so, we invite people to have a Blue Friday. And you, you don't have to wait till Friday to have a Blue Friday, by the way. You can have a Blue Friday any day. Uh, and what that means is we want people to, to look for opportunities to build your relationship with the water, uh, with water, because it's going to serve you personally. And it's also going to, uh, people who are connected to the water will protect it, will uh, be the water keepers. And uh, we believe that's a, I, I personally believe that's a, a key part of uh, you know, the, the sustainability of our planet. Because of how core water is to our own health and how integrated that is, looking at how it impacts the world, um, you know, we need to take these actions to keep the waterways clean, safe, and carrying that, that right energy. So Blue Friday, it, again, it looks a little more white, but, uh, uh, but let's take an opportunity to, to, to have a Blue Friday, have many Blue Fridays, build your connection with the water, and uh, and go have some fun. Um, on social, you'll find us at Track Everywhere. Um, you'll find us everywhere at, on social, <laughs> Track Everywhere. Um, this is a, a calendar piece that is part of Courtney's work that uh, is actually today's theme of devotion, uh, March 8th. And um, I'm not going to go through it, but a beautiful thing that kind of looks at the rhythms of the season, and you get to kind of look at what the theme is for the day. Um, today happens to be devotion. I think it's, uh, it's quite apropos. So thank you very much. I really appreciated the time with you today, and I hope uh, everyone got, got some nuggets there, and uh, enjoy your weekend. Okay.